Hi, it's 11.30. Happy Sunday. It's 11.30 already, and I haven't done a blame thing except take a bath, and I just now got back from walking Penny. I don't understand what's happened to this day. I mean, I did sleep very late. It was like 7-something, and it's like I blinked, and it's 11.30. Did the time change? Because that's usually what happens when the time changes. You just don't realize how late it is already. Anyway... My mom and I watched a movie years ago, and I don't remember the name of the movie, but it was like a murder mystery type movie, and the young man that was the person who deceased people in the movie, he would say, I lost time. So my mom and I would say that all the time on occasions like this. Well, we lost time. Not that we were going out and deceasing people, but you know, we just lost time. So I have lost time today, all kind of time. So I'm gonna tell you a story. I've already told it, but it's been a while back and it's about the possum. Now, the reason I'm retelling the possum story is because <laughs> Trisha texted me last night and she said, every time I think about us and that possum, I get so tickled. And she said, I just have so many happy memories of us when we were neighbors, but that's definitely one of my favorites. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to retell that story. You might have to know Trisha to know how funny the story is. Anyway, and then I got a, a few other possum stories. <laughs> Living in the South, possums. Anyway, so I had to be to work at 7 o'clock. So I would usually head out to walk Charlie at about 6.15 something like that. And we made, just like here, we made a quick loop and came back home and then I would head to work. Well, it was dark. So I had a little flashlight that I used. So on that morning walk, I see, a, Charlie is alerted to something, you know, dogs can sense and smell and do all the things. And he's like barking and I'm like, what is it? And I'm looking all around and I see this possum hanging in a tree. Well, I didn't know it was hanging in the tree. The possum was in the tree. And I was like, oh, good morning, George. You know, George Jones, they called him the possum. Yeah. So I was like, good morning, George. And we went on about our merry way. Well, that afternoon, I get home from work and we go on the same path. And I see the possum again. And I'm like, well, dude, you've been hanging out here all day. And that's when I noticed that this little possum's back leg foot was stuck in these tree branches, like the tree kind of almost like scissored around his foot. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's been here all day. Well, anyway, I turn around and I rush Charlie home. And then I go over to Trisha's house and I knock on the door and she's like, hey, come on in. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want to come in. I need you to come help me. And she said, oh, okay, come help you with what? Now, let me tell you a little bit about Trisha. Trisha is one of the most brilliantly intelligent and funny people that I know. She is extremely smart. She's from Rochester, New York. She is one of those people that can listen to something and she has it all memorized. She can read something. She has it all memorized. She's just one of those brilliant people. And then there's me. <laughs> I tried to read an email that they sent my dad yesterday. I think I read that thing like 10 times. And I was like, I have no clue what this is saying because it was so many words. And what I thought it said was what it was saying, but it was just so legalized with all these words. And I was like, I could have said all that in a paragraph. Instead, it was four screenshots of an email. Anyway, not the point. So, I said, well, there is this possum stuck in a tree. And she said, I'm sorry, what? I said, well, it's a possum. It's a it's a possum and it's, it's hanging by its foot. And it was there this morning and I didn't know it was stuck in the tree. I just thought it was in the tree. But then when I went to walk Charlie this afternoon, the possum is still in the tree. And really, I just need you for moral support. And she was like, I don't really know how to dress to go rescue a possum. I mean, she was being silly because she had on like jean shorts and a t-shirt. And she was like, do I need any sort of special boots? Do I need a hat? Do I need... <laughs> She's being all silly, right? I'm like, would you just come on? You don't have to do anything except walk with me to help me save the possum. It's just moral support, okay? I just don't want to go alone. Okay, I, I just don't. 
just come with me. So she's walking along behind me going, I can't believe we're going to save a possum. I cannot believe I have moved to Georgia and now I am saving possums. <laughs> so anyway, we get down there and I'm trying to assess the situation and she's standing way back. I said, well, I think if I could just find something that has like a hook, like a tree or a limb with a, a hook that I could pull it apart and he could drop out. And she was like, what if he tries to kill us? I said, he's not going to try to kill us. <laughs> he's a possum. He's not going to try to kill us. He might hiss at us, but he's going to run the other way. And she's like, I just don't know about this. I just don't know about this. What if he drops out, out of the tree and he comes after us? And I was like, he's not going to come after us. I just, just help me find a stick that's got a hook on it so I can pull those tree limbs apart. <laughs> yup. It was so funny. It was like the Beverly Hillbillies meeting the rich neighbors. Yeah. I mean, not that Trisha was rich, but I'm just saying it was very intelligent. Upstate New York meeting redneck hillbilly. <laughs> Go save a possum, Tracy. Yeah. that It was like that. So anyway, we find the tree limb. She's standing way back. And I'm like, it's not gonna, they, really, they can't run that fast. You're like six foot tall and you're all legs. So I'm pretty sure you can outrun it anyway, okay? I'm the one that needs to worry because my legs are literally as long as your lower legs. So I don't worry about it, it's fine. But I didn't want to go just pull the branch because he was right there. And I was afraid that he might could, you know, somehow curl himself up to bite me. Because he was in a bad place. He was in a bad mood. I could see him being a little grumpy after hanging in a tree all day. I'm sure he was hungry. So, I wanted the stick. Okay? So, anyway... We find the stick, I go over there, and I hook it, and I'm probably standing six feet back. And she keeps saying, what if he bites us? What if he comes after us? I'm like, he's not going to come after us. If y'all knew Trisha, you would understand how funny this is. Because she's not a person who is a fearful person. She just is not. But this possum did her in. It just did her in. So anyway, I get the tree pulled back far enough to where his foot turns loose. He drops to the ground. He turns and looks at us. He hisses. He shows us his little pearly whites, and he waddled on away. I said, see there? See there? But did you die? No, you did not. It's fine. We saved a possum. So, yeah, she still laughs about that story because she was so freaked out about going to save the opossum. She calls it an opossum. That's how smart she is. She calls it an opossum. I mean, that is how it's spelled. Anyway, second possum story. And that's sad that I have that many possum stories. But anyway, I worked with a guy named Bobby. And Bobby was infamous for giving us... Okay, so we have this thing called a phonetic alphabet, which is what the military uses. A is alpha. B is bravo. C, Charlie, D, Delta, E, Echo, F, Foxtrot, okay? You get where I'm going here? Well, the letter P on the phonetic chart that we use is Papa, P, Papa, O, Oscar, or O, Ocean. Some use different ones, right? Well, Bobby is giving a tag number on the radio. A tag number is a license plate number, a registration number for your vehicle, here in the Georgia, I don't know about anywhere else, we call it a tag. Okay, back to the story. And he says, P possum. And then he says, A orangutan. I was like, first of all, possum actually does start with an O to be technical. But an orangutan, orangutan starts with an O, which is ocean or Oscar. Bobby was infamous for coming up with the absolute funniest names for the letters. I don't know if he couldn't remember the actual, I can quote them all to you right now. I have them deeply ingrained in my soul, what they all are. I don't know if Bobby just couldn't remember them or if he just didn't want to remember them and he liked using his own. So that's that possum story. Third possum story, my mother went out, we had a built-in swimming pool growing up 
and my mother went outside and there was a baby possum in the pool. Now it wasn't like a baby possum. It was more like a, in, mm, a toddler possum. It was still small that you could hold it in your hand, but uh, I don't know, it's like a gopher. No, it's not a gopher. It's like, what are those little things? Those little, um, you know, those guinea pigs. It was about guinea pig size. So my mother gets the dipper. Now my mother is scared to death of everything. Snakes, she would jump on a ladder holding her poodle, screaming to high heavens when I was 13 years old and dipping the snake out of the pool. That's how I grew up. I think that's why I am so like calm in serious situations because she was not. And I had to be the calm one to go in and handle it. But my mother dipped the possum out of the pool. And then that wasn't enough because of course he's gonna play possum. Plus it was cold. We were about to shut down the pool anyway. So he was in a bit of shock. My mother goes in the house. She had a load of towels in the dryers in the dryers. We only had one dryer. And she takes a warm towel out of the dryer. And then she grabs the leftover bacon that she had cooked for breakfast. And she crumbles it up and she goes back out there and she wraps the possum up in the warm towel and she lays the bacon right in front of the possum. So the possum is starting to warm up. He's starting to come alive. Who knows if it was asleep or just cold? Who knows? But anyway, He's, his little nose starts, they have really cute noses. His little nose starts moving and he's smelling of the bacon. So he starts kind of trying to get up. He's wrapped in a towel. So mom unwraps him and she kind of rubs him down, you know. I'm like, you're touching a possum. My mother's touching a possum. Not that that's wrong, but you have to understand who my mother was, okay? I'm in total shock that she's doing all this, but I guess she went into mom mode with the possum. He eats the bacon, then he turns around and hisses at my mother and he waddles off. And my mom was like, well, you're welcome. <laughs> Fourth and last possum story. <laughs> did you know you would hear about possums all day? No, you did not. I mean, not all day, but whatever, shut up. Okay, so fourth possum story. I go walking into the back of my yard. Gracie was heading out there towards something. We were all out there. I was like, well, where's she going? because she usually doesn't wander to the back of the yard. So I go wandering back there to look about and see what she's going to look for. And there is a deceased possum in my yard, just dead. Nobody killed it. I guess it just chose my yard to die in. It just passed away, old age, which doesn't really happen a lot with possums. I was like, why did you choose my yard? Of all places that you could have just laid down and died, why did you choose my yard? I have Charlie, who would go pee on it. That's the worst he would do, is he would go hike his leg and pee on it, because that's all that dog ever did when he encountered anything. He would just hike his leg and pee on it. I guess boy dogs, I don't know. Penny? would have probably been trying to, I don't know, drag it across the yard. She'd have been trying to roll around with it. You know, I I'm thinking of the roofer poop at this point because that's what she chose to do is roll in the poop. So I'm thinking she would have probably, you know, tried to roll around with the opossum. Gracie would have probably tried to eat it because, you know, cats are very self-sufficient. So I was telling Trisha, I said, well, my other possum story is... I had one die in the backyard, and I knew that I had to get rid of it. So I grab it. I don't know how I grabbed it. I think I put on gloves, if I remember correctly, and I just grabbed it by the tail because it was fine. It wasn't like decaying, it wasn't like swelling, it wasn't, it was just dead. So anyway, I picked it up by the tail, and I, I mean, I left all the animals inside. And then I marched my happy butt through the fence down the driveway, down the road, up the road, until I get to the woods. And then I slung that possum just as far as I could into those woods. I was like, well, circle of life. I didn't want to throw it away. I didn't want to have a dead possum in my trash can. That would attract some nasty critters to my trash can. You know what I'm saying? So I tossed it in the woods. I'm sorry, George, that I didn't give you a proper burial, but... It's called the circle of life, okay? Anyway, that's my possum stories. Okay, so this today, so this today, 
I took the chili and I put it into my little colander and I strained the juice back into the bowl. I didn't get rid of it. And then I clumped up a little spoonful on each one of these little tortilla chips and then I topped it with my dairy-free cheese. And so now I'm going to have chicken nachos for lunch. Hi, I am trying to clean my bedroom and I cannot seem to be left alone. I mean, I'm cleaning the floor. If y'all could just lay in the hall and let me clean the floor, that'd be great. But no, they have to be in here with me. So I just laid down on the bed. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. So that's what we're doing. But one more quickie and then I will say, I will bid you adieu. Oh, well, first of all, I think it was Dan, Dan or Don, but I think it was Dan, said, it's not actually good day, mate. It's good day, mate. In his words, Aussies are too, what do you say? Too lazy to say the whole word get, good? Okay. <laughs> good day. It's good day, mate. Good day. Anyway, good day. That's more of my cockney coming out. Good day. Good day, sir. All right. Anyway, focus, Tracy. I, I'm catching up on videos of the prom that happened at Longhorn Lester's last night. If you are a Lester and family follower, they're starting to post all the videos of the prom today. But one of them is wearing a tiara. And my sister is afraid of water. And my mother is also afraid of water. But she used to tell my sister, if you will just put your head under water, I'll buy you a tiara. Whatever tiara you want, I'll buy you a tiara. I mean, my mom did put her hand, head under water because she could hold her nose and dip under and come back up. But my sister couldn't do it. Well, 50 years later, my sister finally puts her head under water. She immediately calls my mom and tells her, you're not going to believe this. I just put my head under water. I need my tiara. My mother went out and found her a tiara and gave it to her for Christmas. And my sister cried. <laughs> She finally got her tiara she had been waiting on. Anyway, that's it for this video. Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. And I hope he's coming back soon because these pets are glued to me today. And pray for Israel and pray for everyone. Just everyone. Just pray for everyone. And I will talk to you on the next Tracy Tries. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.